Hello. Hello. <laughs> How you doing, Heather? Good. Um, are we live? We're live. We're ready to nice. go. Nice. I'm jumping in. Um, so, welcome to episode two of our vlog. This is amazing. Hashtag bilingual we. I'm Heather Robertson Devine. I am the owner of Books Del Sur, and I would like to introduce you to my co host and today's featured topic, Krista Jimenez. Hello, I'm Krista Jimenez. I'm the owner of PuraVidaMoms.com, um, a bilingual blog about everything raising bilingual kids. And today we're going to be talking about just one of the techniques that you can use to raise your kids bilingual, and it's a technique that we use at home called minority language at, at home. So um, I, first we're going to recap last week's epi episode really quickly um, because we're just starting this community and we're really excited about it. And we're just wondering or we're talking about how bilingual can look different in a lot of different houses. Um, it can look like someone using Spanish all the time at home. It can look like um, what Heather does, which is using Spanish during literature. Um, I just met a young woman who we're kind of looking, um, I've been listening to the Biz Chicks podcast and they talk a lot about outsourcing because I'm getting a little tired trying to do everything and be a full-time mom. Um, and I just interviewed a young woman to come and help us who um, whose parents don't speak Spanish, but she went to a bilingual elementary school and then spent the past year in Peru and is fully bilingual going into high school um, and is mm -hmm. looking for ways to practice her Spanish because she doesn't get it from her parents. Um, at any rate, no matter what type of bilingual you are um, and where you got it, it's just super important to keep the language alive. Um, and we found a great way to do that is through books and literature. Um, but there are a lot of different ways to do that. So if you want to let us know how you're um, keeping bilingualism alive at home and to join our community, you just need to use our hashtag, hashtag bilingual we, um, and then every, all of our content and all of our discussions are searchable. We're on every social media platform, which you can find in our show notes um, at puravidamoms.com. And so that's where we're at. Yeah, so today, uh, Krista, I made a short little video and shared it with you in our Google in our Google Drive of um, how people can access our different, um, uh, um, connect with us in different ways with the hashtag bilingual we. Um, and so I kind of take people on a little bit of a tour of our, of the bilingual we page on puravidamoms.com. And uh, yeah, so check it out and then once you give the approval boss lady you can upload that to the YouTube channel sounds good but today all right sounds good so today we're gonna focus on uh, like you said in um, the minority language at home and the, one of the we're gonna use an article kind of as our focus and our talking point about this as well as your experiences Krista so the article is um, from multilingual parenting and um, and that will be in our show notes. We're calling them show notes, right? Because we're that fancy. Of course, we're fancy, clearly. Okay. Perfect. The door behind me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the plethora of things behind me. Very fancy. <laughs> totally, totally organized. <laughs> of course. Um, maybe we could get a sponsor, one of those closet peoples or something. <laughs> the kids in our store or something. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that would be amazing. <laughs> okay. Back to our topic. Sorry, I'm tangential all the time. So one of the things I wanted to talk about was um, I wanted to introduce two terms today: sequential bilingual, and that's what we talked about last time um, in our in our um, session about who we are. And both of us are sequential bilinguals, meaning that we learned English first and then Spanish. But it could go the other way around too. Someone could learn Spanish first and then English. Mm -hmm. And and also um, the other term is simultaneous bilingual, which is really what I feel like your um, both your girls are becoming, right? Simultaneous mm -hmm. bilinguals, learning both the languages at the same time. Mm -hmm. so, um, those are two terms I wanted to introduce today. And um, and then at the end, I'll talk about one research article about just what you proposed at the beginning, Krista, and how important it is that children hear the language um, 
which is uh, an article uh, about many looking at many different pieces of research and identifying that uh, the most important thing is for children to use their their is to use Spanish and and why that's important to support that idea. Perfect. So, so let's get started. And can you talk a little bit? Or tell us a little bit about um, why you define um, your strategy as minority language at home strategy. Yeah, so I'll give a little bit of background first about kind of how this all came about. Um, because as I mentioned in the last episode, I'm from Colorado, native Colorado, and my husband is a native Costa Rican. And when we met, he didn't speak any English and I was learning Spanish. So our language together was Spanish. Um, but right after we got married, well, no, that's not true. <laughs> right after we got engaged, we moved to the United States to get married because um, he came here on a fiance visa. So we got married and we moved to a smaller town, actually the town where I was born, um, Longmont, Colorado, which is a very um, maybe divided community as far as kind of the Latinos stand one side, the gringos stand the other. And um, so we moved there and I began teaching high school and Ricardo was essentially learning English so that he could get a job. Um, because he's in banking and he he didn't want to work outside of his field. So when we were in Longmont, um, we always spoke Spanish to each other. But as Ricardo started to learn more English, um, our language at home became really Spanglishy, <laughs> or like I would practice speak Spanish to him to keep mine up, and he would respond in English to keep his up. So we're both speaking our non-native language. Um, so. At any rate, through all of this, we met this amazing community of about nine families who were all raising bilingual kids um, in some way, shape, or form. And we're still really close with them today. The kids' rate um, age, age, age range is from 27 all the way down to, on a, um, to my youngest daughter, who is um, who just turned one. So. We have this great community and we are, we, we had to move to Denver for our jobs. And then of course decided to have kids. So as I was um, pregnant, I started to really dive in deep with our bilingual friends in our community um, to see what, who was actually raising kids that turned out to be bilingual. So there were different levels. There were kids who could understand Spanish but couldn't speak it. There were kids who could speak home Spanish but not really anything else. Um, there were kids who didn't speak it or really understand it because their parents gave up. And then there was one family, um, she's from Palencia, Spain, and her husband didn't really speak much Spanish but he learned when the kids were born and they did minority language at home which means that they only spoke Spanish at home. You were only allowed to speak Spanish at home. The second you walk through the door of your house, they're like, they were never allowed to speak English to their parents or to each other within the house. And they were the only kids in our group of nine families that are bilingual and biliterate, bicultural. So, <laughs> I started, I thought that's going to be really hard to do because my husband and I had kind of gotten into this speaking Spanglish or just kind of speak what you feel and it'll all come together. Um, but you know me well enough, Heather, to know that that wasn't going to be a high enough standard for my children. <laughs> I wanted them to be like completely bilingual, bicultural, biliterate, reading, writing, speaking, translating the whole thing, you know, by the time they were two. <laughs> okay, just kidding. Not really. But um so we ended up choosing this strategy. I spent a lot of time with the book Bilingual is Better by Ana Flores and um, Diaz. What's the other woman's name? Do you know? Do you remember? It's okay. Um, that just outlined different um, language strategies and we decided on minority language at home. So at our house, um, when we speak to the children or each other, we only speak Spanish. Heather, sorry to interrupt you, but did you hit mute? Oh, sorry, I'm know. muted. Can you hear me now? Okay. That's okay. Yes, I can. Like, I can't. I don't know what's going on. All right. Um, Rewind. Yeah. 
Um, so one of the things that the article mentions is that uh, parents have to have strong nerves, that's an exact quote, to be able to maintain this uh, minority language at home. And you talked about how you and Ricardo already kind of ran into this issue um, bef before kids. And then um, after kids, you're more sleep deprived, you're more exhausted. So can you talk a little bit about um, how, how you've been able to maintain it and what motivates you? Yeah, so um, you hit on a great point. It takes really strong nerves for a lot of different reasons. So my husband was really hesitant to speak Spanish um, to my kids in front of anybody else who didn't speak Spanish because he thought it would maybe be disrespectful. And he was also really hesitant to speak Spanish in front of the kids in public because he didn't want other people to think that he didn't speak English. Um, so that part was kind of a huge conversation of saying we need to establish right now that Anybody who walks into this home has to understand that we're doing what's best for what, what we think is best for our kids and only speaking Spanish to them. Um, so that was kind of training number one, right? Um, when our oldest was born, he would say something like, oh, you're so cute. And I'd be like, no, ella es linda. Like you can you cannot even one word of English. But it was to train us, to get us in the habit that like when we look at our children, they hear Spanish from us. Um, and it does take really strong nerves because at a, I think my oldest was maybe three or four months old and they were just like, I would spend time with my mom and my daughter and I would always be speaking Spanish to her, but there were just family terms or there were like pieces of things that I wanted to communicate to her that um, weren't in Spanish. And so it really, it took, it took some kind of navigating and personal reflection to realize that maybe we do me 90 or 85 percent Spanish but anything that was passing on like my family culture or values um, because we live near my parents so a lot of those kinds of things that we would agree to do in English that being said it's still been really hard especially when our younger daughter was born and I was super tired and I needed to discipline our older daughter and like the first thing that came out was not like this beautiful Spanish thing it was like please stop hitting your sister if she's a baby <laughs> um, and so yeah, it takes a lot I'm sure of, no one no one listening has ever had to say that. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. Or something no, like that. It's only my children are terrorists. Yeah. Um, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> it's not a funny joke. They're not terrorists. Um, so, but then what motivates me is there's a couple things. Number one, that being bilingual has opened so many doors for my husband and I. It's huge. Like, I can travel to any country in Latin America or Spain and speak to anybody and you know, be completely independent and navigate and all of those things. Um, my husband's family is monolingual Spanish. My family's monolingual English. Like I want the girls to have relationships with both sides of the family. And then spending so many years in the classroom working with bilingual students and seeing like how their brains are just wired differently. And they, they're open to all these different perspectives because they just understand that everything is dual. Everything is double. Um, you can say things two ways. You can, um, you know, you can see two sides to everything. You can, all these different things. And so I have to think about that, especially when I'm tired, <laughs> because it, it gets exhausting. For sure. For sure. It, is, it exhausting. is exhausting. Especially, yeah. I got a live one, by the way, just, just for the record. Um, a live one what? My Thomas woke oh, up. Oh, dang it. Yeah. It's, he's cried in his crib before, so let's keep going because I got another question for you. Okay. Um, just a clarification. You've mentioned it, but you haven't exactly addressed it. So um, another caveat to this um, minority language at home is um, what language is spoken in public. So you, I'm not sure that you completely addressed uh, Ricardo had the issue about, oh, do I, do I still speak Spanish in public? Um, how do you guys deal with that? Where are you at with, with speaking the minority language in public? I mean, for me, I always speak Spanish to the girls. But, um, and Ricardo's coming around. It's still really hard for him because he's just so darn respectful. And he doesn't want anyone to think that he's talking about them to the girls or anything like that. Um, but I have definitely had instances at the playground or at the supermarket or things like that where I'm speaking Spanish to the children and someone will come and say like, how, how are they going to learn English? You know? Um, 
and that's really hard because number one, they're doing it in front of my children, which my oldest is three and a half and she's whip smart. She knows exactly what's going on. Um, and number two, because they're really questioning something that's none of their business. And so sometimes I just don't want to deal with it and I just speak English. <laughs> um, and I know that's kind of the, I don't know, coward's way out, but I feel like maybe through the site and the vlog, I'm going to educate the whole world, but maybe it doesn't have to be a battle that I fight in front of my kids all the time. I don't know. I'd love, love, love viewer feedback on that one <laughs> um, and where we're at in our journey. And also, if I am, if we're in a play group of all English speaking kids, then I switch to English. Um, because a lot of times that means my oldest has to field questions about like, what did your mom say and why does she do that? I just don't think that that's a position that she needs to be put in at three and a half years old. So um, I just, I don't, she's there to play. She's a kid. So she can just play. Yeah. Not have to explain it. Right. Well, and you know, um, I'm glad that you talked about the community and, and, and other people's experiences and other people's support is really why we've decided to create hashtag bilingual we because when you and I connected on the issue of man, this is hard. <laughs> I mean, this is really hard. And um and and especially staying at home uh, isolates us even more. And so um, the whole point of community is to support each other. And and you know there is no right answer. the The best answer is the best you can do, right? And the and yeah. um and that's all we can do every day. Uh, and some days we're better than others. You know, <laughs> some days we get more sleep than others. Let's just be honest. I mean. <laughs> So, um, so I think that the community, we hope more people will join us and we, I've already gotten tons of great feedback so far. Um, looking forward to more people joining and sharing their voice so that all of our voices can be heard and um, those, those difficult conversations we have with people become, become not so difficult for us and we are a little bit more brave to, to share and to, and to feel confident in, in what we're doing and, and how we're doing it. Yeah, the community support behind it is huge, and it's just something that has really lacked for me. Um, so you're right. That's why we created this, and that's why I'm so excited. I mean, Tuesdays come around, and I'm like, yes, it's bilingual we day. <laughs> 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 There's other people who know what's going on <laughs> and get it, and, you know. Um, so please do not forget to share your experiences, your questions, your hardships using hashtag, hashtag bilingual we, um, or in the show notes you can find um, all of Heather and my Facebook pages, websites, you can message us, just anything, you know, we're starting this community and we want to hear from everybody. Um, so please use it. For sure. So b before we, I uh, close, um, and, and we'll, um, we do have a question of the week too, so that we're going to focus on and I'll, We'll hold that off for a second. I just wanted to say, um, talk a bit about the article, the research article that I'm going to share this work week. Um, it's it's an older article. It's from 2008, and it's actually um, so that might seem old, but for for academia, it's it's one of the more more recent. Mm -hmm. And and I'm sharing it today because it is one of the most comprehensive studies of studies. <laughs> so um, it's it's written by Claude Goldberg. He is a professor professor at Stanford. So, yo, um, that's like Ivy League, right? Um, a little weight it, behind it. <laughs> yep, it's got some weight behind it. Uh, it's a, like I said, it's a study of studies. So, it's um, 19 different studies that it, it, it reports. Oh, sorry, approximately 200 articles and reports are are studied in this, in this article. And um, th the key finding is that um, it is most critical for students, for children to learn in their first language, in their home language, or um, if they're going to be, um, it, it, or in the minority language. So, for example, Krista, your daughter's learning at home and hearing Spanish at home. It is really critical that they learn how to read in their first language. And we're going to talk more about um, pre-literacy pre skills and what we can do at home um, to help our kids to, to learn Spanish. Now that doesn't mean necessarily that for Thomas, who's his primary language is English, it's, it's going to hurt him to learn, learn how to read in Spanish. That's not what it says at all. And actually we will share more uh, research in the future about um, what the brain research shows. These are just academic 
um, re articles focused on um, children who have learned Spanish at home and are entering schools. So what mm -hmm. um, schools call English language learners, they're, they're in English as a second language programs. Um, uh, other schools call them biling emergent bilinguals. There's all kinds of names for them. Um, but this study that's very comprehensive um, does does recommend the first finding shows that it is most important for students to learn to read in their in their first home or home language. So that is one article. It's it's a it's a it's a long read, um, but it is well worth it. And so um, I look forward to sharing that with you guys. Yep, and we'll put two others in the show notes that are more kind of blog posts that aren't quite as academic, but really more experiential from multilingual parenting and also from um, bilingual monkeys. And um, multilingual parenting just talks a little bit about how difficult it is to use minority language at home. Um, it's called Use It If You Can, um, and just kind of talks a little bit about how to stand strong if you can, and if you can't, how to be kind to yourself, which I need to learn a little bit. Um, and bilingual monkeys um, overviews kind of all of the stri um, language strategies for raising bilingual kids. And I just thought I'd throw that in there as we're, for the next um, four weeks, we'll spotlight each week a different type of bilingualism at home, um, either sharing our own experiences or pulling in um, experiences from others. So we have um, one parent, one language coming up, situational, bilingualism. Um, so if you are somebody that is falls under those umbrellas and you'd like to maybe join us or chime in or share your experience, again, hashtag bilingual we um, or find us on social media and we'd love to hear from you as we prepare for those our next episodes. And you can also join us during our, our Google Hangouts. Um, you can view it and then you can send us messages and we can converse with you that way. Absolutely. So finally, before we close, the question for the week is, how are you staying committed to using a minority language at home? So Krista shared just her commitment and, wh and what it means to her, and that's, and that's what, how she's staying true to it, but she's not perfect, and she's going to give herself some, some kindness. Um, what are you doing? We'd love to hear from you, and um, all of your ideas support others and, and help us motivate us and help us to stay focused. So look forward to hearing those from you. All right. Well, Heather, thank you so much for leading the discussion today. Um, it was yes. fun to be interviewed a little bit. And I know you've got a baby who I can hear sometimes and thought was my baby for a bit, so you better go get him. Um, but we, you can join us next week at 2 o'clock on Mountain Standard Time for another live episode of Bilingual We. Thank you so much. Thanks, Heather. Bye. <laughs>